Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome board member of NRA, ACU, ACUF, Carolyn Meadows. Good morning, CPAC. I have the great honor to introduce a friend of many years. Uh, he's had a great influence on my life as yours. Before Sean Hannity uh, was a rock star at Fox, he was actually a rock star in Atlanta. <laughs> Yay for Atlanta. When uh, Fox was a startup company, and they wisely asked Sean to come on board, uh, they, were, they were just getting started. And Sean came to me and said, what should I do? Should I leave, leave security and go to this startup company? My advice to him was, go for it. You and Jill don't even have children yet. And if you go bust, what will happen? You can go back to Alabama and paint houses. <laughs> uh, he has done a phenomenal job. And for the cause of conservatism, I think we owe Sean a great deal. Um, And if he retires ever from Fox, he can go to some high school, throw out footballs, and do practice with them. So please welcome my hero, Sean Hannity. <laughs> Hello, CPAC. All right, I got something. How y'all doing? Yes. All right, we got plenty more footballs. How y'all doing? Why don't you all get closer and I'll hand you the football. Everyone, come on in. Y'all have been sitting, everyone's tired. Look at these gorgeous, great American girls. I wish we could get them a, a sh on shot there. Look at these three girls in the green here, how cute and adorable, and their bigger sister in purple. I'm just guessing. That's, that is the future of America right there, and that's why we're gonna fight so hard. I have, let me start with some good news. Thank you. Don't worry, all you that get closer and come closer, the odds of you getting a football are much higher. <laughs> I, uh, I have some good news to start. America, America, we will fundamentally transform it back to the great country it was. Our long nightmare, our long nightmare of lawlessness and Obamacare and and weakness as it relates to foreign policy, an economic nightmare, is coming to an end. And it's going to take every single solitary one of you in this room to make that happen. You all with me to join in and do that? You know? You know, one of the things, I want, let me ask, because we have so many candidates. I am probably the perfect person to be here in one sense, because I'm like all of you. I have not decided who should be our nominee yet. All right, hang on. We can play. All right, who wants uh, Marco Rubio, Senator Rubio? Senator Ted Cruz? Senator Rand Paul? Huh? Ooh, I'm going to forget somebody's name, and they're going to be really mad. Who likes Governor Bobby Jindal? Former Governor Rick Perry. How many people like former Senator Rick Santorum? He's going to be speaking today. Who likes Ben Carson? Right? We got a deep bench. Who likes Governor Scott Walker? Wow. 
Very impressive. As my dear friend Matt Schlapp just told you, I am optimistic. There's my friend Matt. And I believe that you, this process now starts. You remember how you felt the day after Mitt Romney lost? Okay, I know how you all feel because my TV ratings, the second day after he lost, you all abandoned me for like six months. <laughs> because why? We were all depressed, right? But the process starts now, right now, and I am convinced that somebody that you will hear from this stage during this conference, which I'm so honored to be a part of with its rich history of advancing the conservative movement in America, are gonna be right on this stage and you are gonna make everybody in this room watching on C-SPAN and Fox News, you are gonna make that happen. I applaud all of you for your hard work and your efforts. You are the grassroots. Isn't it getting a little old? We're at the point where, you know, I, start, I talked about this with Marco Rubio today. I'm gonna to be back on stage with Donald Trump and Jeb Bush later. You all staying? Okay. Okay. By the way, have Jeb Bush any supporters? Any Chris Christie supporters? Who did I forget that's running? Who? Carly Fiorina supporters? You know, Ralph Nader, security, can you get this guy out of here? What's that? Hannity's not running in 2016. Donald Trump, I didn't mention any Trump supporters? Okay. All right. You know what though? Think, think, of, how, think of how these years have been. If every single thing, it's, we're in the seventh year of the Obama presidency and he's blaming Fox News, Karl Rove, Rush Limbaugh, Mark Levin, Glenn Beck, Sean Hannity, and when all else fails, who does he blame? Right? You know, it's sort of like if the dog bites, if the bee stings, if you're feeling sad, whose fault is it? Knick knack, patty whack, you give your dog a bone and then you're a stupid liberal and you try to take the bone back from the dog after you give the dog a bone, the dog bites you. It's not your fault, it's not the dog's fault. Whose fault is it, right? Some of you were drinking heavily last night. You woke up with a headache this morning. It's not your fault. It's not Jack Daniels' fault either. It's not Budweiser's fault. Whose fault is it? If you're stupid enough, let's say I had a bee's nest at, at my house. If I was stupid like a liberal, <laughs> and I took a baseball bat and I knocked down the wasp nest, and the bees sting me, it wouldn't have been my fault. Wouldn't have been the wasp fault. All right, so we have a young, good-looking crowd here at CPAC, right? By the way, I am so glad you young people are here. You are the future, and we are gonna make this country good for you. We are gonna do it. I can look out in the crowd, I kind of have X-ray Fox vision, and I can see some of you women, you don't even know it yet, but you're pregnant. It's not your fault. It's not his fault. Whose fault is it? No! Hannity's my old friend, Bill Clinton. I can't blame Bush for that one, yeah. All right. I want to get serious in, in this sense. Um, my, you all, we all have a similar story. It's, it's the American story. All four of my grandparents, God bless their soul, they came to America. They had no money. They had a, a hope that they could build a better life for their children and their grandchildren. My father grew up really, really poor in bedford Stuy in Brooklyn, New York. And my grandmother, his mother, died a couple of months after childbirth, complications from childbirth. My dad had a tough life. He fought in World War II for four years. And it was a really big deal when he got that 50 by 100 lot. How many of you grew up in that kind of neighborhood, right? A lot of us. And it was a, a Cape Cod house and three older sisters, one bathroom, definition of hell on earth. Spent a lot of times running out to the back, but 
I did in the bushes. It was bad. It's the bushes' fault. All right. Hang on. You deserve a football for that. Anybody that gives the, the speaker a joke, that's good. We got a laugh, I you get a football. But I, the way I look at my life, I have been blessed to live in this country, blessed by God that I really feel that I stand on the shoulders of these people that were risk takers, that were willing to leave their country behind in the hope of what the stream of America is. And I stand on my father's shoulders. I think my father, he died six months after I started at Fox. If he were here today, I don't think he would feel so successful because his dream wasn't for himself. It was for his children. They sacrificed to send us all to Catholic schools. They didn't have a lot of money. It was a big deal that they, they sacrificed that money. How many of you have similar stories, right? So many of us in this room, even you guys in the back, hello, right? Here's what I want to tell you. I want to give you a little bit of bad news, and then I want to give you a little bit of good news. What do you want first, the good news or the bad news? All right, I'm going to give you the bad news. I look at this audience, and I'm looking right around this stage, and I see one young face after another. I'm looking all out in this crowd, which gives me hope for the future. Here's the problem. I never thought there'd be a time in America where 50 million of our fellow citizens just shy of 50 million live in poverty in America today. They're struggling to feed their kids. I never thought that we would have nearly 50 million Americans on food stamps in America. This is the land of opportunity. This is the land of plenty. It's almost 20 million more people than when Barack Obama became the President of the United States. We can do better. Now, I never thought there'd be a time in American history. Remember when Obama was running in 2007 and 2008? By the way, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so to some of, not, not this crowd, obviously, all the liberals that are going to be writing about the speech and don't like me. I never thought, he said about $9 trillion in debt that it was irresponsible and it was unpatriotic, right? He is now, he, by the time he leaves office, he will accumulate almost as much debt as every other president before him combined. Add to that $100 trillion in unfunded liabilities. The American people are needlessly suffering because of bad politics in Washington and bad governance. Now, the other bad news I have to say to you young people, I feel bad because this may become the first time in American history where our generation leaves this country in worse shape than that which we found it, which was the antithesis of what our grandfathers, our grandmothers, our fathers and mothers wanted for us. They, they wanted us to do better than they did. My hope for my children is that they live in America that has more opportunity, more prosperity, more success, more wealth. Jack Kemp used to always say, it's not a zero-sum game that a rising tide lifts all boats. You know, I look at right now, I never thought in my lifetime that the world would be, be battling Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, ISIS, Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, Hamas, radical Islamists, that, you know, Newt Gingrich made a great line. He said, they have been at war with us since 1979 and the Iranian hostage crisis, all right? The 9-11 Commission report said, they were at war with us, we were not at war with them. We now, I never thought in my lifetime that I admire the king of Jordan after one pilot was burned to death. He opened up, he opened up the gates of hell and fury on the radical Islamists that killed that poor innocent pilot. I, I never thought I would admire the president of Egypt who went before imams and said, you have got to take back this religion from radicals that are hijacking it. And that when 21 Coptic Christians martyred and assassinated in cold blood, 
that he would unleash hell and fury on radical Islamists that he identified. And this is the sad part. The day that the president gave a statement about a fellow American by the name of James Foley. How many of you saw the video? I saw it. Who was beheaded by these radical, modern day, frankly, Nazis. Brutally, it's a level of evil, unprecedented, that the president would give a statement, turn around, and 30 seconds later be on a golf course. Unbelievable. Shameful. Yes, sir, shameful. I never thought I'd have a president that would try and tell the American people and convince them the Islamic State is not Islamic. I never thought I'd have a president that when 21 Christians were murdered, didn't identify them as Christians. I never thought that I'd have a president with his radical background and associations, which you all know where I feel on that, and I won't go into greater detail. The world right now is craving answers, solutions. The answers and solutions I have always believed at a, as a conservative are going to come from us. I started the Conservative Solution Caucus in 2014. I wanted the Republicans to run on ideas. Everybody in America has made up their mind about Barack Obama, okay? He's gone, thankfully, in two years. I want, as somebody, well, as, some, as somebody who's not made up their mind who is gonna be president, I wanted to just give you a few points on what I am looking for in the next president of the United States. There's a great, one of my favorite movies is Braveheart. You remember, you like Braveheart? Freedom! Okay. I love, there's a moment in that movie, William Wallace and Sir Robert the Bruce, William Wallace turns to the, the you know, elites, the nobles, and he says, they're outside there, but I see strength in you. I see strength in you. Unite us. Unite us. Now, I know there are some people in this room that identify themselves as Tea Party conservatives. I identify myself as a Reagan Tea Party conservative. That's where I stand. I know there are people that maybe we view as establishment Republicans. So what I am proposing is this. We are in such a tough position as a country. These problems are so great, and I want to make sure that we live up to our responsibility to leave a country better than we found it. I propose the following things. I want to make sure I would like to see the establishment and the Tea Party unite, okay? You're skeptical, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change your skeptic. If the Republican Party is honest, if you are establishment or you are Tea Party, do you not agree it is immoral to accumulate $18 trillion in debt and rob future generations of their inheritance. We all agree? Okay. I like the penny plan. I like a balanced budget amendment. Instead of baseline budgeting, cut one penny out of every dollar every year for six years. We balance the budget. We do it because it's morally right for our children and future generations. I want, that's something I think the Tea Party, conservatives, and establishment, we all ought to agree on. I want the next president of the United States to commit to eradicating radical Islamists, not degrade. I want, I think, Republicans, Tea Party, conservative establishment ought to agree that radical Islamists equal the modern, they are a modern day version of the 100 million souls we lost in the last century, Stalinism, fascism, communism, Nazism, and we all ought to agree that this cancer we must rid the world of this evil. Do we all agree? Yeah. I think as conservatives, establishment, Tea Party, conservatives, I think we can all agree on another thing. I am tired of America being dependent on countries that hate our guts, right, for, for our energy. We have more energy with, coupled with new technology for hydrofracking, high, horizontal drilling, we have more resources than the entire Middle East combined. Let's, we all ought to agree, establishment Tea Party, let us break this monopoly, 
let America commit to being energy independent in five years ought to be a goal. We have some of the best and brightest minds. We send them to some of the worst schools that America has ever seen. How about especially inner city America? I say that establishment, conservative, Tea Party, unite on this principle. Let you, the parents, choose the school that you want to send your children to. Right? I know there's a lot of issues involving immigration. Some people want comprehensive immigration reform. Some people want, like me, I prefer to secure the borders first. It's like tax, it's like tax increases and, and spending cuts. You always get the tax increase, you never get the spending cut. You're gonna get amnesty, you're never gonna get the border secure. I would think that we can agree on one thing first. Let's secure America's borders for the safety and security of the American people. I, I just want to say this. We have 92 million Americans out of the workforce, 50 million Americans in poverty, nearly 50, nearly 50 million Americans on food stamps. We have evil in our time that needs to be defeated. This is my pledge to you as somebody who's undecided. On both my radio and television program on the Fox News Channel, I promise you this. As somebody who has not made up his mind, I am going to give access to every single solitary candidate as often as I can, as often as they'll come. By the end of the process, I will ask them every question I can possibly think of. And then I am putting this all in your hands. And what I'm saying to you and I'm challenging you is to dig deep, find the person that, that absolutely understands that it is the destiny of this country to stand as a beacon of hope and freedom for the entire world. No country has given more to the world to advance the cause of freedom than this country, the United States of America. And I am just saying that I believe somebody at this conference will be the next president of the United States of America. And you're gonna make that decision. And I wanna just say one last thing and, and wrap up now, okay. Sorry, Matt. I wanna say one last thing. We owe it to the young people in this room. We owe them that we are gonna work day and night blood, sweat, tears. We owe it to the soldiers who have sacrificed their lives, their limbs, in the defense of liberty and freedom. We owe it to them that when God calls us home, sooner for me than a lot of you young people, when that happens, that we leave them with what President Reagan described as that shining beacon city on a hill. There's nothing America can't do and it begins in this room, and I pledge this to you. We will work day and night, if you all commit in your hearts, that you are gonna fight for your country, fight for the cause of liberty, fight for your constitution, fight against lawlessness, stand up and defend our troops, fight for the principles that we outline here today. If we start on the points of agreement, we can make this once more the great, and I believe America is god destined and will make America once again the greatest country God has ever given man. I'm proud to be a part of this fight with you all. God bless you. Thank you very much.